Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on, you know, it's another lovely Florida morning, but I'm not fooled. That little brief couple of days we had of a real chill where it was even nice in the middle of the day, you know, that's over. I mean, what we're getting right now is a good, decent morning that's got fairly low humidity, a good, decent evening that's about the same. And then in the middle of the day, it's this baking tropical sun uh, that just still makes it miserable. You can't be out, at least I can't. I mean, I'm sure, you know, the guy who comes down from Rhode Island probably loves it, but I don't. You walk outside, the sun's baking down on you. It's that e equatorial Florida sun, and uh, it's just not what I want. You know, I'm looking for a cold snap. I honestly don't know why the hell I live here. I really don't. I mean, you know, if I can't even be happy in this weather, then obviously I just can't be happy. Uh, but we're going to jump in and uh, get another video going here. And uh, before I start with the intro, I, I, real quick, this is going to be a short take because honestly, you know, how deep can you get into this thing without you know, being a bit strange. So uh, this one is going to be a fairly quick video and it's a 1995 Nissan D21 or as it was called in Japan, a name that again, I don't know what it is with the Japanese and their names. They actually called this a Nissan Datsun. I mean, they're all Datsuns to me, so it's basically a Datsun Datsun, but in Japan, this was called a Nissan Datsun, and it happens to be a fire truck, and uh, of course, that's going to be the theme of this video. We had absolute silence before, but the minute I start filming, of course, we're going to get low-flying airplanes right over Peter's yard. Look at this, moving at like four miles an hour. And I think there's another one. There's a helicopter now. Yeah, there's a helicopter. Yeah, that's just absolutely fantastic. So, you know, silence, barely even any birds. Start filming, we get helicopters and airplanes. <sighs> Honestly. Anyway, so the weather is what it is. Uh, you know, I've had copious amounts of coronavirus whiskey this morning. You never know, that thing's still hanging around. You hear about it from time to time. Uh, I'm still on those antibiotics, so uh, I do run the risk of becoming violently ill, according to my doctor. But I think he's kind of a, you know, he's a bit dramatic. He's a, he's a real drama queen. You know, everything, oh my God. You got to stop smoking. You're you're gonna die. Well, no shit. You know, obviously, I'm aware of this. I've seen the ads. It's kind of you know entrenched in popular culture. Uh, I, if I had, you know, it's not like this. What what there's there's. You, you think there's a something bad could happen? Yeah. Okay. Fine. You know, just check my colon and whatever the hell else you need to do, and let me get the hell out of there. But anyway, uh, I digress. Let's just get right into this thing. I promised a short take, and a short take it's going to be. So look, this particular Japanese domestic service vehicle was provided by my friend Clemens uh, from KB Auto Collection. Uh, he currently has it for sale. Along, You know, Clemens deals in the most high-end cars you can imagine. It's all Bentleys and Porsches and Ferraris and, you know, 2026 models. And all of a sudden he has a Japanese fire truck, as one does. So uh, he wanted me to make sure that you guys knew this thing was for sale, you know, in case you've been looking for one. And uh, and so we will. And I'll give you uh, Clemens' number. I'll put it up on the splash screen in the beginning uh, if you want to give him a shout. Uh, but he's a very nice German guy. Uh, been a friend of mine for uh, years. And frankly, he reminds me of the bad guy from the uh, from the movie Die Hard who said uh, you shoot the glass if you remember I think his name was Klaus or something uh, but anyway every time I see Clemens that line goes through my head and Die Hard conveniently is a movie about a Japanese corporate building called the Nakatomi Plaza uh, in Los Angeles set in Christmas time uh, which frankly is a little bit weird because I don't think the Japanese really celebrate Christmas. I mean, they're all a bunch of Shintos or Buddhists or something. So I think Christmas is just like any other Wednesday or Friday to them. But either way, the movie was, you know, about this Japanese building and it was, uh, you know, it was a Christmas party. So there it was. Uh, but that, that it makes for a very convenient segue 
uh, for me into Japanese culture, which is something that I like to touch on every time I'm forced to drive some right-hand drive Japanese domestic vehicle, which of course I was to bring this thing to you today. And uh, so last night I sat down, I got out a piece of paper, I got out a legal pad, and I wrote down everything I could think about, uh, about Japanese culture on this piece of paper. It actually turned out to be a surprisingly long list, uh, which surprised me. I mean, I, I didn't know that I was an expert on the topic, but apparently I am. And it left me wondering what the weather's like in Japan and, you know, if their tourist board is hiring and what kind of ground animals they have running around. So who knows? Maybe I could end up over there. It seems like kind of an interesting place to be. Uh, but anyway, here, yeah, yeah, this is what I came up with. <clears throat> and you have to forgive me, the list is a little bit long because again, uh, I think I got a lot of this stuff through osmosis over the years. But uh, when we think about Japanese culture, we think about sushi and uh, karate and comfort women and water ghosts. Uh, you've got samurai swords and samurais full stop. You've got ninjas. Uh, you've got kimonos, you've got throwing stars, uh, B-29s, hente, chopsticks, Pearl Harbor, geisha girls. Uh, you got fish and seaweed flavored chips, which frankly sounds revolting. Uh, rice crackers, which I like, but they're really just empty calories. Uh, you got tiny feet, you got Mr. Miyagi, you got pagodas. Uh, you got kamikazes, you've got uh, bukkake, you got something called mango comics, you got Yoko Ono, uh, Benihana's, pixelization, another thing I'll never really understand, uh, anime, sashimi, schoolgirls, Mount Fuji, sake, sumo wrestlers, epilepsy inducing light shows, uh, wasabi, hairy carry. Uh, transparent walls and low tables, but most importantly of all, you've got Godzilla. And that's where we're going to get into this truck, because key to any proper Godzilla attack uh, are the hordes of little service vehicles running around, piloted by frantically yelling Japanese guys upset that the Americans have created this giant fire-breathing lizard that comes from the sea to burn down their cities. And obviously this would upset anyone, so I get it. Uh, but uh, naturally they want to put out those fires and that's where this truck comes in. Uh, you know, Japanese city layout, uh, it requires small maneuverable lightweight vehicles, uh, particularly emergency response vehicles uh, that can get through crowded city streets and uh, you know, up the side of Mount Fuji in a hurry if it needs to. And, uh, you know, once it's there, uh, the small maneuverable vehicle has to pack enough punch uh, to put out a pretty big fire, you know. Godzilla's up there fighting Mothra or that Hydra thing or whatever the hell it is. It's setting fire to everything. Uh, so they got to put that shit out. And uh, thus, I give you this truck. Uh, it's a crew cab, which they didn't have that. He will get into the D21, but this was, you know, a Japanese product, not available here. And uh, it seats 12 Japanese firefighters in relative comfort. It's a lifted four-wheel drive uh, for extra traction and clearance. And uh, it has a large gasoline-powered pump in the back with uh, two large uh, water pickups and like 500 feet of hose. These are the pickups here. And I tell you what, man, if I thought I could carry this shit, it looks heavy to me, uh, and so I'm not going to try, but if I thought I could carry it without having a coronary, a coronary, <sighs> without having a coronary, I would be draining Peter's pool and koi pond in a New York minute. Absolutely would. And I tell you what, I kind of like these pickups because they've got these weird little plasticky wickery baskets on the end of them, uh, which are obviously anti koi or anti infant things, which won't let you suck one of them into the pump and clog up the work so you get full water flow. And uh, I think that kind of shit is really important. So, anyway, whether we're talking about bukkake or putting out Godzilla fires, flow is the key. And uh, this thing has it in droves. Uh, once you're sucking the water out of the pool or pond or whatever the hell you're sucking it out of, uh, look at this shit. You've got like 500 feet of hose up there. Uh, every one of those hoses is like 70 meters or so 70 feet or whatever the hell. I can't do the metric conversion, but they're long. And if you put them all together, they're really long. 
uh, so you're able to get where you need to go and uh, basically put out the fire. So, all right, look, real briefly, let's have a talk about the truck that it's based on, which I could have done this whole video about, but it seemed silly uh, to do that while you have a Japanese fire truck. Uh, but it's a Nissan D21. Uh, it was sold in the U.S. as the hard body uh, from like the mid 80s to the late 90s. And frankly, it's something that I always thought was a really strange and sketchy name. I mean, it sounded like, I don't know, it sounded like an ad for suntan lotion or something. The hard body. It's just silly. I mean, as opposed to a soft one, I, I don't know that I've ever wrapped my knuckles on a fender on any car that was soft, so I'm not really sure what they're comparing it to. And I never really loved these things because they replaced the... Uh, uh, the Datsun 720 truck, which was this sort of sleek, nicely boxy, low slung, four, you know, quad headlight affair that looked terrific as a little customized mini truck, which, you know, they were popular in my youth. And uh, I just loved them. They were great Datsuns. All of a sudden, these things came out. And frankly, I thought they looked a little bit awkward. But anyway, despite my aversion, the D21 is a pretty legendary global platform. It's absolutely beloved. It's known for a reliability and durability, which is probably more important to a truck than having a reasonable name. So uh, maybe you can excuse the Japanese for that. Uh, it's light duty. It directly competes with the Toyota truck, you know, like the Tacomas and shit. And uh, it did so very, very well. They, they sold well against them. There were plenty of them out there. And uh, there was just as much of a cult following for the uh, Datsuns as there was for the Toyotas, even in the United States. Uh, you can get them with four cylinders six cylinders, gas engines, diesels. You know, I'm not going to get into all that because it's it's just too pedestrian a car. It's just not that interesting to me. They had manuals and automatic. You know, fancy Western versions aside, these things were pretty much about pure utility. They were like the F-150 for the globe, if not in the United States. Uh, you know, the unsung heroes of a capitalist economy with, uh, you know, ferrying all manner of consumer goods and services and utilities and government agencies and entities from point A to point B. Uh, you know, that was their duty, and they performed it very, very well. Uh, the ones that lived in the U.S., uh, yeah, okay, maybe a few of them were upmarket and whatnot, but they all lived extremely hard lives. I think that's part of why they've gone up in value. Uh, they'd end up dying in some meth-encrusted Midwestern town with, you know, worn-out custom wheels and three out of four white letter tires and some awkward side graphics somebody bought at AutoZone and, you know, some shit hanging from the rearview mirror, and, and there they would die. But, um, you know, the ones that have uh, survived, they went through sort of a cult resurgence and they're actually pulling pretty big money now in the auction block. So uh, I imagine that's because so many of them just got used up and thrown out. And uh, it's just one of these things that surprises Like a lot of other cars from my youth, it surprises me that they're now classics. You know, when I see a K car go through a collector car auction and uh, the auctioneer is talking about it being a classic car, I think, hey, what the f <sighs> How does that make sense? It's what Taggart drove in Beverly Hills Cop. How the hell is this going to be a classic? But it is, and apparently the D21s are now getting into the same category. Uh, and I'll say this, to drive this one, uh, which was obviously not used, it came from Osaka. Uh, it has like 13,000 kilometers or something, which is well under 10,000 miles. The thing's basically new. And it feels like an impossibility uh, to drive such a well-preserved D21. A really strange impossibility. It's like being Madonna's first sex partner or something. It just, it just doesn't feel right. And, um, and there it is. So look, they're good trucks and that's fine, but this is a fire truck, uh, you know, a Godzilla fighting fire truck from Osaka. So, uh, let's take a tour of it and see what we got. That's why we're here. And again, this is going to be a short video. So look, I'm going to start up front. And here's one of the things that always sort of annoyed me about this thing. I think it has kind of an ungainly hood. I don't like the way that the hood seems so high and folds over and comes down the front uh, with a lower grill. I'd almost like it to have stacked headlights, family truckster style or something. Uh, I just think the hood always looked a little bit weird to me. Uh, you know, it's badged as a Nissan. Uh, you've got these two large square lights that replace the four smaller square 
ones on the uh, previous gen, which I liked so much. Uh, the fender mirror is cute. It's kind of adorable. I tried using it, but I didn't really get the point, but I love that it's there. Uh, you also got chrome side view mirrors, which I guess, you know, and then some chrome up front. All of that could have been black, but I think firemen, even all the world over, love polishing chrome and cooking steaks in their spare time. Uh, there's this odd curly Q pinstriping all around it, which looks like a bunch of stacked dead wolves or something. I keep looking close at it. It could be warthogs or boars or something, but uh, I can't quite make it out what it is, but it's interesting. And uh, it is, again, a sign to me of just how strange the Japanese are. Uh, um, the emblem, <laughs> I guess this is the company that turns it into a fire truck or something, brave corporate logo, but I mean it looks like an alien ninja turtle is sort of spread eagled on a flower. I mean it, it just seems like, a, like everything else, just kind of a weird awkward corporate emblem and it would take a long time to sort of write if you had to. Uh, I think IBM's is a bit more efficient, but you know, again, the Japanese. And here's another thing that bothers me. One light bar? I mean, that's it? Uh, you know, you're talking about a people that install toilets that have more uh, complicated light show than a Pink Floyd concert. And we get this thing, I'm driving it around, and all I've got to play with is one light bar. It's set up basically the same as Roscoe's patrol car in the Dukes of Hazard. I mean, I want every part of this thing to be flashing with, you know, maybe LEDs weren't the thing in 95, but you still, you could have put lights everywhere. They're not. That's it. That's all you get. I can't even make the siren work. I was going to wake up Peter this morning, and uh, I couldn't. Let's give this light bar a flash, see what it looks like. I don't think you need the key on for that. I think this is the siren, but I couldn't make it work. Yeah, look at that. One of these old gumball things. So I love it. I've been driving around with that on, and it's been fun. Uh, but I keep waiting to get pulled over and, you know, the felony stop thrown on the hood of the thing and, you know, told that I'm not allowed to run red light bars on the streets. But until that happens, we're going to keep going with it. So very, very enjoyable. Turn that back off. All right, so going around, you've got these little flared fenders. That was another kind of neat feature of the uh, the hard body truck. Uh, the, it's got automatic locking hubs. Again, this is a four wheel drive, so that's kind of neat. Uh, you can see it's got plenty of lift on it. Uh, I think that looks like maybe an inch or two above even the factory lift on a four wheel drive, but I could be off on that. I'm no expert on these things. Uh, it's got the, uh, again, the automatic locking hub. It's got six lug nuts, which is pretty tough for a little Japanese vehicle. Uh, you can see the frame in there. Uh, it's a full body on frame affair, which makes it more durable and rugged. Uh, you got running boards front and rear, which is nice, able to step up in there. And uh, being this Japanese model, they did get the crew cabs there, which we never did. So uh, again, your 12 Japanese firefighters are gonna fit in that, no problem. And here's the fun part on this truck is that all this crap is still here and it still works. And, uh, you know, you know, Clement said, what a great idea for a little rural community to buy this thing, some neighborhood association, and they end up with their own fire truck. And that's true. Uh, and on the side, you could run a pool draining business or, you know, whatever else you needed. Uh, it's got all these levers and big, you know, spinner connectors and chrome things and uh, nozzles, which is a word that I absolutely love. What a great word nozzle is. Apparently you unscrew it and then you can screw it back on the hose later, but let me steal one of those. I don't know if Clemens is going to notice if I take it or not. He might not. You got a compartment in here which still has all the crap in it. Looks like a sewage drainage hose and absolutely no idea what this crap is. Looks like something you would have seen on Baywatch. Plastic things, more spinners, yeah, all very cool. So you got a little compartment there. Uh, there's again, you've got your strainer, anti-infant strainer on the big uh, suck-up hose. You got some wheel chocks here. You got a little, looks like a sprinkler head removal tool, but probably it isn't. Uh, going around to the back, you've got this big 
I hope it's gasoline powered and not diesel because I filled it up with gasoline last night. So uh, Clemens could have some issues <laughs> if it isn't. Uh, I don't know why this is. I'm going to pull it out or something. I guess it looks like it all swings out so you can fire it up. And uh, of course, that's going to pump tons of water out of Peter's pool and uh, spray it on whatever the hell you want to spray it on. You got more nozzles here, twisty bits, I guess, to control the flow. DA constant, very, very nice stuff. I mean, it's interesting that all this crap is still with the truck, that it was that well preserved. Uh, you also got some sort of light on a tripod. You got more hose stuff. You got a very rickety looking ladder that I don't think would support New Jersey or Wisconsin firefighters, but uh, I guess it's good enough for the little Japanese guys. And you got another big spotlight up there. Uh, there's another strainer on this side. You got more of these outlets, inlets, that sort of thing. Uh, you got your instructions in Japanese, which I find very difficult to read. Uh, you got a big red lever here. I have no idea what it does, but it probably does something. You got some gauges that tell you about the pressure. And then you've got, this looks exactly like the uh, controls that were on my big track. Oh, look at this shit. You can turn it on. I don't know if I hit play, what happens? Holy shit. Hold on, lamp on, no. Uh, it's not one to start. Uh, we're going to have a look at that. I bet the battery has gone to shit in this thing. It has one tiny battery in it that Clemens put in. I think he cheaped out. Looked like a small battery. But anyway, that's apparently how you start the thing up. And it's uh, all done by Tohatsu. So, God bless him. All right, I tell you what. I'm going to take a quick break there. Pause for a minute. Uh, have a little more uh, coronavirus protection. And uh, then we're going to look under, well, I tell you what, I'm going to look under the hood real quick because it's a 10 second affair. It's just not that exciting. So we're done with that. Then we can have a look at the inside and go on. Let's see if I can get in here. Oh God. All right. So there it is. I believe this is a 2.4 liter four cylinder. Again, you could get the diesels, you could get the uh, six cylinders, which of course more of the American setups had. And uh, damned if this thing doesn't look like it's carbureted, although that's probably a throttle body. But man, it looks exactly like the engine that was in my dad's 76 Corolla. So, uh, you know, I didn't pop the air cleaner off to see, but it'd be hilarious if this thing was carbureted in 95. Uh, obviously it began life is white uh, and then uh, you know was painted for the uh, fire department you got your little VIN plate over there you've got some stickers here which of course are all in Japanese so I really don't know what the hell is going on and uh, I don't have any Japanese friends to translate but uh, like I said you know four cylinders six cylinders diesels gas automatics four-speed manuals five-speed manuals uh, you know there were all kinds of setups that this thing had uh, which um, you know made it useful around the globe and uh, that is the under hood so again pause there get my shit inside the truck and then we're gonna go for a spin all right so let's have a look inside again I love all this crap here so uh, in the back seat you got tons of rooms you would think Japanese firefighters would find something better to carry their extra hose around than some hefty bags but and eh, maybe that's the guy who bought the thing you'd think they'd have some kind of stylish you know canvas bag or something uh, there's all the crap that I bring with me one of these days I might even give a little tour of my travel kit which is just a daily kit uh, to show people just maybe I can shame my Myself into stopping it. All the useless crap that I lug around with me on a daily basis. But anyway, you're not going to fit any firefighters or Canadians back here set up like this. Maybe one or two. Uh, you could fling a couple infants in there, but that's about it. Uh, I don't know what what's up with these headrests. They're strange. I don't think that's the way they came. This sort of odd attachment point. I didn't pull up the seat to see if there's anything interesting behind it. Uh, you know, I probably should have done that, but it's too late now. Uh, but anyway, there's the back seat. And, uh, you know, it's a Spartan affair. You've got vinyl door pan, little tiny. It's like a door pull, only smaller. Uh, window cranks and, oh, look at that. Uh, I guess Japanese firefighters smoke. Uh, but anyway, there you go. So that's what the back seats of a crew cab D21 look like. And uh, you can see it still has 
the white interior panel. They did a pretty nice job painting it. I guess they charged a lot. Love the chrome door handles. Again, the firemen and their chrome. And uh, let's hop in. And more jets. Right hand drive, and now we've got jets. Anyway, while I'm here mistakenly, let's have a look in the glove box, because this is interesting. Let this thing pass over. Uh, basically, what you've got here are all of your Godzilla fighting instructions and, uh, you know, how you're going to get uh, all the fires put out that he's going to start when he's fighting Mothra or whatever the hell it is. Here are the different paths Godzilla's going to take through the city. Uh, the little red dots are probably where the fire guys are going to set up and start yelling at each other. Uh, it's all in Japanese, so I can't be sure. It could also just be the location of strip clubs in the village, but uh, either way, there it is. You've got a bunch of different uh, Godzilla fighting strategy plans uh, for Osaka, and it's interesting that that still is with the vehicle. And uh, here's uh, an ad for uh, what looks like some kind of Japanese cigarettes. Uh, you got this book here which I have absolutely no idea. It's probably a prayer book for when, you know, you have... Oh, no, it's not. You've got instructions there on what to do. It looks like a completely different vehicle, but I'm sure the uh, setup is the same. And uh, this gives you some sort of specifications. Yeah, okay, there's that. There's more stuff in Japanese. You've got this thing's laminated, so it's probably important. There's a telephone number list. Well, if we run into emergencies, obviously don't call anyone because there's not a single number on there. And, uh, yeah, I have no idea what the hell that is. Gas, battery, oil. Yeah, I suppose that's all important shit. Uh, here's the owner's manual. Uh, this is probably the original Japanese title. And more stuff. I mean, this is fascinating. I wish to God I could read Japanese so I'd know what all this stuff is. But uh, either way, it's interesting that it's still with the thing and uh, kind of cool at the same time. So there, you got something else to go through. Then we got more laminated crap. We got some sort of inspection form and dealer order numbers and... You know, probably a car wash coupon. Uh, you got a radio there with a uh, attachment. Maybe this tells you who to call if there's an attack. And uh, there you go. So a bunch more shit there. It's even got a little key to open it up. I don't know what the key's for, but I'm sure it's important. And uh, look at that, a speaker, because it does have a radio. But yeah, all right, let's just get in this thing. All morning, I've been... You know, I just don't do well with right-hand drive vehicles. I end up in curring on the left lane because I want to be, it's the comfortable position. I've never been one for being able to make the switch very easily and uh, do a right-hand drive car. And if I turn on the uh, wipers one more time trying to use the signal, I'm going to do Harry carry myself. But uh, anyway, let's hop in and see what we got. All right. So, again, a fairly spartan affair. Uh, you're not talking about a vehicle that's particularly well equipped because, again, it's a fucking fire truck. So, you know, they're not going to lavish these guys with equipment. It doesn't even have air conditioning. Uh, let's fire it up. This takes all it'll get. I think at least the clutch of the key are on the same side. I think it's fuel injected because I've never had to pump it or anything. It always just fires right up. This is a tilt wheel. Pull that guy down, and then you can lower it a little bit. And I have the defrost on from this morning, so let me turn that off. Get this out of gear, and we'll see what we got over here. You got your CB here, so uh, Japanese number one Godzilla actress secret weapon. You can talk into that thing. Uh, down here, you've got uh, an ashtray, which this one, the front seat guys aren't using it. Doesn't eh, that's lit a few cigarettes and these guys are smoking. Uh, you've got a what is going on here? Uh, thing runs like a top and all of a sudden it's chugging. Uh, you got an AM AM radio, which maybe is different AM because I'm not able to tune anything in. I have the volume all the way up and it seems to do nothing. Car stalling on me. Then you've got a radio down here with different oh man. Oh shit. Okay, see I, I <sighs> There's the siren. Okay. <laughs> I guess I found it. Uh, I think Peter's probably out of bed now, so. Oh, boy. Okay. There it was. 
and uh, I'm going to keep going. You've got a five-speed manual shifter here. You got your transfer case control for the four-wheel drive. You got your e-brake. You've got all these dead switches where it would have had power windows. You got a little spot for some kind of Japanese Luger copy you could put in the center console. And uh, again, it's sort of like being in a new uh, D21 hard body. I mean, these things are so beat to crap usually. Let me plug this back in. That was quite a surprise. I gotta, I gotta tell you, that I didn't see that coming. And I have no idea what the red light is, but it scares me. Uh, you get over here to the gauges, you've got your uh, water temp, you got your fuel, you got your uh, 160 kilometer an hour speedo. And there you see just under 13,000 kilometers on this thing, so it's got virtually no miles at all, and uh, 6,000 redline tack, and uh, a little nice horn, so, and of uh, course over here your siren control, so, all right, not siren. Let's go for a spin and see what we got. All right, what the hell now? What have I done with this thing? Oh, for the love of God. You know, it's always perfect right up until the moment you need to go somewhere in a video. It, it really just is incredibly offensive. I mean, this thing is run like a Swiss watch. Now I'm sitting here and it's not doing shit. Unbelievable. It even smells flooded. Maybe I've flooded the damn thing. <sighs> I'm going to pause it for a minute and see what's going on. Bear with me. All right, we're finally going. Apparently, I switched the fuel supply over uh, when I tried to run the pump earlier, and we had to switch it back so it was feeding the engine again, which doesn't make any sense because the thing has its own tank, unless that's a pony tank or something. But uh, I am far from an expert in Godzilla fighting, so I just don't know. But uh, anyway, in respect for Peter, let's it's kind enough to fix it. We got the light bar going. I could do that all day. Uh, all right, let's go for a drive. Uh, you know, so now look, other than the fender mirror right there and the odd red paint, uh, the thing's kind of indistinguishable from any D21 Nissan, you know? And that's where I'm getting into this deal, where again, I'm driving a 12,000 kilometer 95 Nissan pickup, which gives you the rare sort of vibe of driving a new one. Uh, when you look up here, you got more Godzilla fighting instructions instead of cocaine mirrors. You got nothing over there. You got a rear view, you got interior lights. You know, it's all very Spartan and basic. Very little gun storage. Not sure what kind of gun laws they have in Japan, but apparently the firefighters aren't bringing much more than an ax with them, so. All right, to go for a spin. Obviously geared pretty low. First gear isn't that tall. But man, I mean, you know, even right-hand drive, which I hate, uh, it's fairly easy to drive. I'm left-hand shifting. I'm holding the camera with my right hand. Uh, the windshield is pretty dirty, but whatever. Uh, but the thing goes down the road like a new Nissan truck. It's pretty, pretty friggin' impressive, I have to say. Anyway, the windshield's I'm gonna pick it up again at the end of the road. Bear with me. I have to say, you do get some attention driving this thing around. People really aren't all that sure what they're looking at. I'm sure some people just think it's an emergency vehicle. And other people think, uh, you know, what the hell is that thing? It's hard to say. Uh, again, it's very interesting that Clemens is selling this thing. It just doesn't seem like his type of vehicle, but, oh, God. I just can't drive right-hand drive cars, and now I'm going to be in the median or over the white line, so I'm going to have to call it, I think. I'm not even speeding, which is unusual for me. Uh, so, so there, there, oh, God's sake. There it is, a uh, 1995 Nissan D21 pickup truck. Uh, this one again, I mean, you know, if you want to put a different bed on it, you know, take the pump shit off, you could do that. You could do, I mean, you keep it as a fire truck. If you're a, you know, rural neighborhood somewhere that takes a while for the 
uh, fire trucks to get there. This thing could be a pretty useful tool to have in somebody's garage. So uh, there's a million reasons to have it. Uh, if for any reason you're interested, and a million might be an exaggeration, but uh, if you're interested, if you've been yearning for a Japanese fire truck, uh, give Clemens a call. He can be reached at 239 250 3003. And that's the KB Auto Collection. He always has a lot of other fancy stuff, but uh, <laughs> this one is definitely outside the box. Thank you for having a look today. Really appreciate it. We're going to get back to some normal shit later. I got that uh, 66 Belvedere coming up, and uh, a friend of mine had a 91 Spirit RT. That'll be a fun car to do. So I promise you I'm going to try and jam out some more videos in the near future. Thanks for having a look. Really appreciate it, and we'll see you with the next one. Take care.